Now, as Literacy Month comes to a close, education matters continue to be spotlighted as we seek to bridge the education gap in the country. Now, various organizations in the country have initiatives that seek to empower young people when it comes to skills development and access to education, such as the Transport Education and Training Authority. Bahai Tsutumelang, a very good evening. My name is Tampo Mulokwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight on Soweto Today, we take a look at the education matters for the spotlight on uh, the Transport Education and Training Authority and the Empower Youth Summit. Joining us to have this conversation is Sabelo Mbuku, who is the spokesperson of the Transport Education and Training Authority, who joins us in studio uh, this evening. Sabelo, much appreciated for joining us. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Tabo, and thank you to your viewers for following us, their eyes and ears. Much appreciated. I mean, let's start the conversation by just looking at uh, the work that you do at uh, uh, TITA, the, the Transport Education and Training Authority. Basically, what do you guys do there? Yeah, basically, TITA is one of the 21 CITAs that we have in the country. Um, CITAs are mandated to facilitate skills development and training in various sectors. So then TITA's mandate is to do that within the transport sector. Now, the transport sector is segmented into four sort of modes mm. of transport. That is your air, your rail, your road, and your, your sea. But then within TITA, we've got, we have extended that to eight subsectors so that we are able to focus our energies in terms of diversifying the skills that are required in each of the subsectors. And these would be, uh, for instance, within the road space, you would have taxis, you've got buses, and then you've got trucks. And those then represent specific subsectors. If you talk about uh, road freight uh, that uses mostly the trucks, then you've got the passenger ones that is taxi and bus. Then if you move on to logistics and supply chain, you've got forwarding and clearing, uh, which predominantly focuses on customs, uh, the courier services, and the like. And then you look at the freight handling. Um, I'm sure people would understand that there are these containers that arrive at our hubs yep. carrying some goods and all of that. That then forms part of our freight handling um, subsector. Then maritime, that focuses then at sea, and then you've got aviation or aerospace that focuses then in the aviation space. Um, and then rail would be maybe the last one that we also look at different opportunities that would be available within the rail sector. Let's talk about, uh, you know, um, placement and, uh, you know, training of um, um, candidates, uh, uh, if I may put it that way. I mean, do you have key focus areas in terms of uh, their training and their placement and also the issues of, uh, you know, is it a wide, you know, spectrum of focus on the various sectors or, you, you know, they are in a specific um, 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 uh, um, activity, if I may put it that way, mm -hmm. within uh, the organization? Yeah, basically as the transport seater, like I've just listed eight different subsectors. Yeah then if we have to um, place, for instance, interns, they would either fall within the eight subsectors or they would be within the supporting uh, sectors like your ICT, um, others in accountancy. So we look at um, various opportunities, uh, internships, apprenticeships, skills programs, cadetships, um, you know, to try and speed up engineers for mm -hmm. them to be, to be qualified. So there are various opportunities that we look at, but over and above that, um, for young people, for instance, that have an interest in accessing opportunities or um, qualifications or careers within the transport sector, there are bursaries that are available annually where they can apply and access those bursaries for transport-related careers. Partnerships, uh, let's start with uh, the importance of that, uh, you know, uh, partnering with uh, the different stakeholders and also the issue of uh, basically the partnership that you guys have with Empower Youth. Mm -hmm. um, what is it all about, actually? Yeah, basically, our mandate is focused predominantly on young people. Now, as a CETA, we might not have the vehicles 
to reach out to, to the country, yeah. uh, to every young person in each and every corner of the society. Now, um, Empower Youth then gives us that opportunity for us to leverage because um, Empower Works that is driving Empower Youth, um, they've got the networks, they have built a profile. So based on that, when we then partner with such institutions, it gives us the leverage yep. that we can at least extend our reach and ensure that we, 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 we bring opportunities to young people, access to information, and ensure that we, we embark on partnerships that work. Because if we can access these young people and have tangible opportunities presented to them, it then at least speaks a different language than the talk shops that yeah. they may have been exposed to previously. So um, how do you make sure that, uh, you know, these young people are interested? I mean, you look at uh, the type of work that you do and then, you know, as you're saying that, look, we cannot, um, you know, reach everyone across the country, but we do uh, try by all means to make sure that uh, young people uh, take part in this. But how do you make sure that uh, they become interested in uh, the programs that you offer there? Um, basically, information sharing and ensuring that um, you present uh, using different formats um, you know, of your content to ensure that young people then uh, are able to gain access, whether it's video content yeah. that would depict or reflect a specific sector or specific opportunity. Typical example, drone technology. Yeah. Um, if you present that in video format and allow young people to see what it is that you can do if you were to do uh, maybe be trained as a drone pilot, uh, a drone technician, what it is that you would do, then it, it would spark the interest. I mean, in different communities that we have visited, you realize that the awareness was not there. There's no understanding of what this animal called drone is. Yeah. And when you have then such, like, you know, young people filling up a hall, but they do not have access to that information, it then tells you that even if those opportunities were to be presented to, be, to them, they wouldn't be able to access them because they can't recognize them. Uh, so well, we're going to take a quick ad break. Uh, when we come back, let's talk more about the summit that uh, uh, is taking place uh, this week. And I guess this evening, Savelo Mbuku, who is the spokesperson at the Transport Energy and uh, rather Transport Education and Training Authority, as we speak more on education related matters. We continue the conversation after the short break. Uh, do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Much appreciated for joining us this evening. Now, before the ad break, we started the conversation on the work that the Transport Education and Training Authority does uh, within the education sector with the intent of bridging the education gap and empowering young people. We continue the conversation with our guest, Sabel Mbuk, who is the spokesperson for the organization. He's still joining us in studio. Uh, Mr. Mbuku, um, let's, you know, talk about uh, the summit, which uh, actually, in fact, took place uh, this past weekend. Uh, maybe you can tell us more about it at uh, the uh, Transport Education and Training Authority and Empower Youth, uh, which was the Empower Youth Free State Summit there. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that. Yeah, basically, um, we, we had the summit in Tabanchu that is uh, one of the townships in, in the Free State, uh, just yeah. outside of Bloemfontein. Um, the, the idea is really to look at the economic drivers um, in the province and see how do we then mobilize these in one room to ensure that then they have direct conversations with young people and be able to tell them the how part in terms of accessing opportunities. Um, and those that would have opportunities that are readily available, then you can be able to present them to these young people. A typical example, you're bringing in various industries to come on board, not necessarily in transport, yeah. but those that would be able to assist young people in the various communities. Now, if you've got institutions like uh, Abo Coca-Cola that would come on board and say, young people in Tabanchu, 
come and pitch your businesses. They give you about one minute or two minutes to pitch your business comprehensively. Then those who would have done well, top five would be able to receive about 20K you know, uh, in infrastructure support to actually support their businesses. So for us, that's the tangible opportunity that we are looking at. And those institutions that would say we're looking at recruiting young people to, to venture into last mile delivery as an example, where they can be able to be trained uh, in new venture creation and be trained to have uh, motorbike licenses. Yeah. That will help them connect then with the e-commerce industry. So these are the real opportunities that we are looking at, where we are saying we go to this township and we speak to the young people and actually test whether are they ready for the opportunities because that is what we've picked up in Tabanju, that most young people were, were not ready, they were relaxed, um, they didn't have access to information maybe, but the key thing is we were able to discover that they need to identify themselves and see what it is that they really want to do. Mm. Uh, in terms of uh, the um, you know points of discussion and takeaways of the summit, uh, what were some of the questions that uh, you know um, the attendees actually raised? I mean, particularly you're looking at uh, a province such as the Free State. What were some of their concerns and also mm -hmm. uh, ideas that uh, you know they actually had uh, uh, while having discussions? Um, I think the key one is uh, access to funding. Um, that was that was dominant yeah. um, as a dominant question, access to funding. Then the question is, access to funding for what? Then that begins to show that the, the, the young people are not ready yeah. because they have an idea of a business as an example, but the business is not registered. And that means they cannot access then funding because you need to be a registered entity in order for you to access funding. Others are sitting at home, they can continue with studies, as an example. The question is, have you applied for a bursary? And the answer is no. And then the one that would lift up a hand and says, I've applied, they did not complete the application. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's simple things that you really feel um, these young people are forfeiting opportunities that are readily available. And I think even the uh, various stakeholders that came in, uh, even economic development from the province that came, they were actually begging young people that come to us because we have opportunities for you. You understand? So, yeah. so that actually gave us uh, an indication that as much as we are saying we want to dangle opportunities to really attract young people either to the transport sector or various economic drivers in the province, but young people are not ready. Mm. As we wind down the conversation, uh, Samir, I want us to talk about how do we get people, uh, also young people involved. I mean, you uh, spoke about the various structures, uh, you know, or mechanisms that you use um, as uh, an organization to um, recruit them also, just mm. to be part of the, the programs that you have. Um, how do we get people involved and, uh, you know, lastly, for people that are interested, where can they find you? All right. Um, in fact, what we do building up to a, a youth, uh, Empower Youth Summit, is that we would have activations on the ground yeah. where either, you know, the, the foot soldiers will go to the malls, will go to where masses would gather, and then do the actual activations and have conversations with young people so that they can ready themselves for, for the summit. But then over and above that, as an institution, we've got a portal that we have developed, which is accessed through www.transportcareers.org. So if you access that portal as a young person, you are able to create a profile, that is you build your CV and then link yourself to a specific area of interest in the various subsectors that are available in transport. Now, once you have done that, you have created a profile which will, which will give you access to various opportunities that will be either advertised by stakeholders 
that are funded by the CETA within the transport sector. For us, that is an opportunity for those then that are looking for either learnerships, apprenticeships, internships, um, skills programs, cadetships. So with those, they can at least access those opportunities. Secondly, there are those who do not know what they are looking for. They don't know what it is that they should be pursuing as a career. Within the same portal, there is a questionnaire that they can answer. Once you've answered the questionnaire, it will give at least an idea of which areas you should be focusing on. And with that, there are links then that would direct you to what kind of opportunities are there and which institutions would assist you with that. So that when there's a bursary that comes up, you are able at least to apply for something specific that will resonate with your personality, your character, and your behavior. So, well, unfortunately, we've ran out of time, but much appreciated for joining us this evening. Uh, a very, very um, interesting and, uh, you know, wonderful initiative that you guys have there. We just wish young people would uh, just grasp it with both hands. Uh, opportunities are galore, as you say. Definitely. Um, and I think uh, for young people, it's important that they access the Facebook page or the social media pages, Transport Education Training Authority or Transport CETA in various platforms so that they can connect with us. Sabelo, much appreciated for coming in. Thank you so much. Uh, Sabelo Mboku, the, the spokesperson with the Transport Education and Training Authority, joining us this evening as we discuss education and the initiatives that they uh, have, you know, to empower young people. We're going to park it there for now. So it today returns on the other side of this. Do stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, we are getting closer to the end of the show. Much appreciated for joining us uh, this evening. Now we switch gears to speak to someone who is a beneficiary of the work that is being done by the Transport Education and Training Authority and Empower Youth. Joining us via Zoom is uh, uh, Mali Fude, who's joining us uh, just to give us a sense of uh, how, uh, you know, the program has actually uh, changed her life there. That's uh, Malifu Mara, who's joining us via Zoom. Uh, Malifu, much appreciated for joining us. Welcome to the show. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, saying Hi. Um, you know, let's start by maybe telling us about more, you know, about the work that you do uh, 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 basically as an entrepreneur. Um, basically, the work that I'm doing right now um, I've been doing it for years now, mm. but the thing is that I used to drop and then go back again and then up until now, up until now, then I'm... Yeah, Malifu, I'm not sure if you can hear me there. Uh, maybe... I have this opportunity. Yeah, I'm not sure because I, I, I lost you a bit there. Um, so let's talk about this opportunity that you received uh, from uh, the uh, Transport Education and Training Authority there in partnership with Empower Youth. Maybe Hokar Votahori, um, how has it benefited you? Uh, also, how has it benefited you? Papa, how has it benefited you? Especially he he sharp at all. Especially mm. after I was homeless and stuff. I didn't have a place to stay. I just stay with my aunt and stuff. So this is really like it really changed my life a lot, a lot because of at some point I lost hope too much because of I was like yeah I, I I'm like this and. There is no way I, I must just give up. But mm. I didn't because of I know who I get for guy and I know who life is even let her run for now. Um my life was painful. My golden apps were so painful. That's the reason that I didn't give up. Especially when uh, 
you don't have a support from your family or relatives and stuff. So I can not just give up that easily. That's why I'm so grateful. That's why I can't even keep on. I, I, I'm, I'm crying. Always I'm crying. I'm crying, crying because of, it's like dreams come true. Like, I can't even stop thanking God, thanking in power works. Like, every day, every day, it's like a dream to me. So it's like, it, it mm. seems like a dream because, especially when everyone abandons you, like, I, I know I'm doing this for my kids and also for myself because uh, at least now I can, I can do my own thing. I can be independent because sometimes when you have a life like this, we end up uh, doing a, taking a bad decisions, doing bad decisions. But I, I, as for me, I didn't. Mm-hmm. As for me, I didn't because I know very well that I, I, I have to be example to my daughter. I don't want my daughter to go the very same way that I did. Yeah. As especially, oh, yeah. Now my parents passed away. Mm-hmm. Now I'm on my own, I'm paying rent. I have to build my daughter her own house. So this thing is a big thing to me. Like it, it is too much. It is a, a big, big thing. Mm. It so, is. So Malifu, um, I, I want us now to talk about, I mean, you are sharing your challenges, and then also, uh, you know, how you've managed to stay relevant. Eh? Uh, and also, you know, horo economica show horo or support your family uh eleng muradia how let uh the tips it's a little horrible kadifa to but also they want to have the same opportunity as when uh particularly looking at the uh tita program there uh you can send to the people out there uh in the same um you know um a space or opportunity it's one a bagre opportunity it's one and we really Okay. Um, in life, don't give up because there's no one out there who will help you or there's, there's no one out there that will take you out of these situations and stuff. So one thing that I can tell them is that how, how will you be my or pillow or face the challenges alone the the especially the, 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 the double as much, especially when you don't have a support from your family, just like me. I I, I don't have it. I I say it's a my lome fail, but they don't. They are not here for me, especially when when things are difficult for me. My question is that if I if something happens to me, what's going to happen to my daughter? support more family at all just like me give up in life they must not give up in life and gonna little opportunities out there and especially as for me there was part of me in join let me just go there and then hear what are these people saying let me just join them i just went there like let me go because of i do think i'm on it's like i'm gonna lose my mind a little bit but i think it will be given someone so it's it like it was a, a, a cancelling at the same time it, mm-hmm. it, it was it was like bank cancel and then Bam build the happy again because just to listen and then I think you know to move fast. It was like there are many opportunities out there. If they can just but 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 strong and then by check yeah by can move link in this or by can a good teacher by share the opportunities by share the money they are they want a little funding when I did the thing other but that's why we got them over the trail but we don't try enough we don't try enough when I need to say I feel we feel like there's nothing out there for us. And then we end up feeling like battle Only to find out there's no such a thing. As for me, I even wanted to commit a suicide. Like I I I I 
killer about pregnant mm. because of decision it's a bad thing so that they can survive only to find out that how na mo unto it unki san day mo and then after that one wana a into khela le wana i was like it, it was a bad decision for na because of nani ke bona e ka ge ke bo phelo ntjo ba tla se bo phelo ntjo ya o le matsa ya o destroy ya yo ba ke la mathata ape on top because at that time at least in le nna at least i could at least nyana survive although i was mm. living on the streets and stuff living with my friends i don't I, i'm homeless and stuff like that and then i end up doing those things i was alone but now i have a daughter so guys out there don't give up don't give up don't give up like don't and then mm. don't think that there are men out there who going to take you out of this situation and then but akona o fa bo philo no those people they they, they, they can do that they, especially but while you're broken and but while you're ring havana mahay and stuff and now look at me i suffered my whole life my whole life up until now i'm 30 years and now mm. at least i can see life so all those years i was suffering but ha ka na gana hore e re ketsa maye ke lo ke lo ke lo re ke sa bo philo ba o go fela ke gona sa ba Malifu, but look at yeah. me now. At least this thing yeah. is a big opportunity. Manifu, um, unfortunately, we ran okay, out of time, please. but uh, uh, much appreciated for sharing your story uh, with us. Uh, a, a very inspiring story there. Uh, you know, through trials and tribulations, you managed to uh, come out and make sure that uh, you make something of your life. Malifu Mara, much appreciated that uh, fast food entrepreneur speaking to us from the perspective of... Um, uh, a beneficiary of skills development and assistance letting us know about uh, its importance they're saying that look uh, she has had a lot of thoughts especially committing suicide and also you know just trying to get by if i may put it that way in order to make a living there uh, a very very touching story indeed thank you to my earlier guest uh, that's sabelo mboku the spokesperson of the transport education and training authority joining us this evening to speak more on education matters as well as the work that they've been doing with Empower Youth Summit there. That's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at Soweto Today at Soweto TV. Or you can call or WhatsApp us at 081 and the rest of the team is good night from us and thank you for watching.